The story describes the counterintuitive of survival of Viktor Frankl, the man who struggled three years of acute labor under extreme conditions of living inside the Nazis' concentration camps. There were various unpleasant conditions the prisoners had to tolerate, such as torture, starvation, hard labor, violence, discrimination, degradation, and demoralization. In the coldest days, they didn't even have any coats to wear or proper shoes conducive to working. Basic human needs like socializing were mostly prohibited. They were not allowed to talk about their families, memories, or even simple topics like their favorite food. The majority of the prisoners couldn't bear the lack of nutrition and torture, so a few months after their arrival to the camp, these prisoners committed suicide. The question is, why did most of the prisoners lose hope and living, while Viktor Frankl and a few minority decided not to suicide during all those years of torture. Thing is, the prisoners who committed suicide didn't see any meaning in their daily suffering. They gave up on life because they believed that there is no concrete reason for being tortured and beaten unfairly day after day. They thought that their daily suffering gave no meaning to their lives, so they decided to kill themselves. In the contrary, the prisoners who survived their predicament had given meaning to their suffering. They labeled suffering as a challenge, not a hindrance. Over the years, the survivors had to shift their attention from what is the meaning in my suffering towards how many times do I have to prove to life that I can handle any obstacle. And the big idea here is to stop questioning about the meaning of life and start acting as if you are the one who's being questioned by life. Life is asking you how much pain can you handle, life is challenging you. And in this context, the meaning of life is that challenge, the challenge to accept suffering as a part of life and to endure any kind of obstacle. For this I wanted to quote the author in his saying, in accepting this challenge to suffer bravely, life has a meaning up to the last moment, and it retains this meaning literally to the end. Viktor Frankl there is another belief that aided in reducing the hopelessness of the survivors and it is to develop a humorous look upon life. What they did was, instead of feeling bitter about their situation, they looked upon their pain and laughed wholeheartedly. They developed a dirty pleasure in the pain. Thinking in this manner, the prisoners managed to recycle every day's agony into a joyous look upon life. They wanted to prove to life how much pain they were able to tolerate. To prove that this mere creature we call human wields tremendous power that lies within him. The potential to tackle any obstacle, whatever the case may be. The prisoners refused to appear weak in the face of life and death, so they laughed, every day they laughed at their misery and kept proving to themselves how much pain they were able to handle. And I want you to develop the same kind of humorous look upon life, upon pain especially. You may never experience torture in your whole life, but it's considered enough bravery to hold your ground against everyday's challenges, to laugh at them and to never give in. The people who are frequently depressed and unhappy seem to miss out on one of the major requirements of a happy life. It's that a good life is based on a certain degree of tension. Because they deny the inevitability of hardships, they ironically suffer the most. Thus a man who welcomes life as it is, as a tragic existence, will experience a dramatic relief from these daily mental torments. Apart from finding meaning in suffering to give your life a purpose, there is another way and it is through an active way of living. An active lifestyle serves a man a reason for living by doing creative work. For example, cultivating a skill, you may want to be a professional artist and inspire others with your work. Another example is building businesses, it requires hustling, sharing, reading, growing, contributing. An active way of living serves life a meaning because the person person wouldn't want to die unless he has accomplished his dreams. So building something great also gives life a meaning 
till the end. So the first way to go about finding a meaning is to stop asking for that meaning in the first place and start acting as if you are the one who's being questioned by life. Life is asking you how much pain can you handle, show me what you're capable of, life is testing you, life is challenging you and the meaning of life lies in that challenge. The second approach we saw to go about finding your purpose is to adopt an active lifestyle. Cultivate a skill or start a business. When you adopt an active way of living, your purpose for living grows associated with building something great. I believe that's a powerful cause to live for. Lastly, I wanted to underline that the meaning of life should never be definite and absolute. My point is, the meaning of life should be reinvented depending on the alteration of a man's circumstances. For instance, in your 20s, your purpose for a living could be creating something of value, chasing your dreams. Perhaps in your 40s and 50s, it will change completely toward building a healthy family environment, for example. So remember, the meaning of life can never be defined vividly, thus it has to be reinvented and regenerated depending on the circumstances you find yourself in.